concept called aldosterone escape. There is a condition called primary hyperaldosteronism. Remember that I told aldosterone what it does? It leads to reabsorption of sodium and hence lot of water and there is lot of fluid accumulation. But in primary hyperaldosteronism, this does not happen. Patient can have hypertension, but patient will not have edema. Why does this happen? The hypertension without edema in primary hyperaldosteronism is called as aldosterone escape. There are four important mechanisms for this. First is what happens because when there is increased aldosterone, what the kidney does is it does not absorb enough sodium in the proximal tubule. So, this sodium that is reaching the distal tubule overrides the effect of aldosterone because it can act only through the limited ENAC channels. So, once this effect is overridden, the sodium is going to get absorbed. So, whenever there is excess volume, like when I told you, when there is reduced GFR and low volume, body is going to reabsorb increased sodium and water from the proximal tubule. Similarly, when there is excess volume, body is going to reject this sodium and uh, this sodium when it reaches the distal tubule or the collecting duct, only a fraction of it can get absorbed by the aldosterone. Once that mechanism gets saturated, this is overridden and the sodium is getting excreted. So, after a point, how much ever aldosterone increases, the sodium and water reabsorption cannot be increased. Okay. Apart from this, there is decreased expression of NaCl transporters in the distal tubule because that is also an important uh, place where the sodium is getting reabsorbed. Okay. Third is increased atrial natriuretic peptide and uh, which causes natriuresis and fourth is when there is pressure natriuresis. So, because of all these mechanism, even though primary hyperaldosteronism has increased uh, aldosterone, there is no much increase in sodium or increase in volume. Okay, so patient is not going to have edema. Coming to the secondary causes of renal sodium retention. First, let us deal with heart failure. So, heart failure, whether it is preserved or reduced, what happens? The cardiac output reduces below a set point. So, this leads to GFR reduce and it activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, sympathetic nervous system, and arginine vasopressin. So, when RAS is activated and sympathetic nervous system is activated, it is going to lead to sodium retention. And when AVP is produced, it is going to lead to water retention. Okay. So, because of these mechanism, there is going to be increased accumulation of sodium and water in the body and this is going to lead to edema. Okay. So, this is what happens in heart failure. And the escape mechanism though uh, uh, that I told you earlier, aldosterone escape mechanism will not work in this secondary hyperaldosteronism because the body never perceives as high GFR, body never perceives the GFR as sufficient because the effective arterial blood volume is low only. Okay, so GFR is low. So, what will body do? Body will try to increase the sodium and water reabsorption in the proximal tubule. So, whatever is the leftover sodium that reaches the collecting duct is going to get absorbed by the mechanism of aldosterone because obviously renin angiotensin aldosterone system is also activated and so this is also further going to lead to increased sodium and water. So, the aldosterone escape mechanism is inhibited or is not going to act. Okay. So, the and also the natriuretic peptide mechanism is inherited, inhibited because of reduced arterial blood volume and this is also not going to act. So, what is happening? The defense mechanisms are broken in heart failure and because of which water accumulates leading to edema. Now, what happens in cirrhosis? There is sinusoidal and portal hypertension because of which splanchnic arterial vasodilatation occurs. So, all the blood is accumulating in the splanchnic circulation. So, what happens to the rest of the circulation? There is going to be decreased effective arterial blood volume. Now, what happens after this? The high, high pressure baroreceptor uh, activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and sympathetic nervous system and ADH. If you go back to the first few slides of this session, I had mentioned when the, whenever there is low pressure, this uh, baroreceptors are activated and the kidney is going to release uh, renin angiotensin renin, which subsequently produces aldosterone. There is secretion of uh, ADH. There is also increased sympathetic activity. So, this leads to sodium and water retention and increased plasma volume. Now, if this is adequate to normalize the circulatory homeostasis, then the renin angiotensin aldosterone uh, system gets uh, 
uh, suppressed because the volume is uh, attained and hence there is going to be normal sodium and water excretion and no ascites. But once this system is disrupted probably because uh, the portal hypertension versus this plantmic vasodilatation versus and the blood uh, effective arterial blood volume is very very low. So, in that situation there is going to be persistent activation of sodium and water retaining system because con so it is going to cause continuous sodium and water retention causing ascites and renal vasoconstriction causing hepatorenal syndrome ok. So, this is the mechanism of water retention in cirrhosis. Now, Coming to the next mechanism of water retention in nephrotic syndrome, this is the third important cause. Okay, so there are two important theories that happens in nephrotic syndrome. Water is uh, uh, reabsorbed to excess quantity. First is the underfill theory. Underfill theory means what? The blood is filled less. Okay, or, or there is reduced effective arterial blood volume. So what is that theory state? Whenever there is proteinuria, there is going to be reduced serum albumin. So the oncotic pressure is going to reduce which will further reduce the effective arterial blood volume. This will activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and causes renal sodium and water retention, right. So, this finally causes edema. In the overfill theory, all, all nephrotic syndrome need not have hypoalbumia. Some like membranous nephropathy or FSGS in the initial phases will not have uh, hypoalbuminemia, okay. So, in this situation, how edema occurs? There can be decreased GFR or there can be interstitial inflammation or there can be increased abundance or targeting of the sodium channel in the collecting tubule. What happens is, let me tell you, whenever uh, an nephrotic state is seen, a lot of plasma proteins are lost into the urine, right? So, this plasma protein does not keep quiet. It goes and elicits interstitial inflammation. Also, plasma protein which is plasmin goes and activates the ENAC channel in the collecting duct. So, because of this what happens there is going to be primary sodium retention and there is going to be increased volume, extracellular volume. Okay. So, finally, this is going to lead to edema. So, there are two major theories of uh, edema in nephrotic syndrome. One is underfill theory, the second one is overfill theory.